Hello, YouTube. Over the past two days, we have witnessed three separate failed assassination or terror plots against Israeli government personnel allegedly carried out by Iran. The first two were yesterday, Monday, Monday the 13th of February 2012, carried out simultaneously in two different countries, India and Georgia. In India, the wife of an Israeli defense attaché was attacked with a sticky bomb attached to her car, injuring herself and another person in the process. The second was at the Israeli embassy in the Georgian capital, and the bomb was discovered before it could hurt anybody in the Israeli embassy. Third was actually today, Tuesday, February 14th of 2012 in Bangkok, where two explosions occurred, one in the street, uh, taking out the person himself, and one at the alleged person involved's home. This man is thought to be an Iranian national. Now, why do I believe this is more likely an Israeli false flag op? Well, let's examine history first. Israel has a history of doing such things, with the most prominent example being the attack on USS Liberty in order to get the United States involved with the war with Egypt. Also, for the past few years, Israel has been carrying out systematically assassination of Iranian scientists and academics, with the most recent one being in January of 2012. In this attack, an Iranian nuclear scientist was assassinated with a sticky bomb attached to his car, which is the exact same MO used in the attack in India yesterday. In response to the assassinations carried out by Mossad and never denied by the Israeli government, Iran has said that it will give a crushing response and retaliate against Israel and the West. But this seems a bit too easy and convenient to be considered a retaliation by Iran. So why do I think this is actually very convenient? Well, let's examine the countries that were involved. After the United States put sanctions on Iran's central bank, limiting its access to the dollar, and the EU adopts an oil embargo on Iran, India, which is a very good training, trading partner for Iran, has recently agreed to drop the dollar and has agreed to use gold in its financial transactions with Iran. So I seriously doubt Iran would actually jeopardize such good relations in such a crucial time to basically carry out such attacks. On the other hand, if Israel was behind it, it would turn India against Iran and help put more pressure on the Iranian government. Now let's take a look at Georgia. According to researcher Rick Rosoff on Stop NATO website, Georgia recently has reached an agreement with President Obama in allowing Georgia to be used as a launching pad for a, U for a United States military strike against Iranian nuclear facilities possibly as soon as this summer. In exchange, the Georgian president would receive funds to get himself re-elected. So an alleged Iranian terror plot on Georgian soil could possibly be used to sway the Georgian people's opinion in favor of such a deal. Now some skeptics might say that there are several Arab countries in the region with US military bases that could be used in a strike against Iran. While this is true, every single one has said that they will not allow their country to be used in a strike against Iran, and ironically, this is actually against US national interests as well. Picture this, Iran can easily retaliate against any of these countries, which aid the United States in a military strike, and all of them happen to be oil producers. Such a retaliation by Iran will have catastrophic consequences for the global oil market and a recovering U.S. economy. But Georgia's economy, on the other hand, is simply based on its agriculture and tourism. And because of its longer distance from Iran compared to all the Arab countries, the NATO missile shield defense system in Turkey could easily intercept Iranian missiles coming from Iran and counter any retaliation by Iran. You know, the stories really don't just add up. Israel seems to be benefiting far more from this scenario than Iran itself. I mean, three terror plots and no Israeli fatalities? That's terrible PR for Iran, but it's really great for Israel. Just look at the media stories depicting Iran. They're all contradictory. At times that suits the neocons and Israel's agenda, such as this one right here, Israel, Iran is this weak country that wires $100,000 through a U.S. bank to a used car salesman and a drunk, described by the people that actually knew the guy, to assassinate the Saudi ambassador to the United States, which his court case, by the way, was conveniently postponed another 10 months. So if the truth 
does come out, it wouldn't, it wouldn't hurt the re-election of President Obama. And at times when it fits their agenda, Iran is this deadly and sophisticated enemy that has mastered the nuclear cycle and can possibly build a nuclear weapon. Iran is this country that has developed long-range ballistic missiles that could possibly reach the U.S. Iran is this country that hacks into one of the most sophisticated U.S. drones and lands it safely. Iran is this country that allegedly provided Iraqi militia with IEDs that literally blew up two and a half ton armored Humvees killing Marines in the process. And this country can carries out three different attacks with zero fatalities. And the Israeli that actually gets wounded goes back and is released from the hospital the next day. Does this really make sense to any of you guys? Okay, here are a couple of other puzzling facts. How about the fact that this attack was carried out coincidentally on the anniversary of Mossad's assassination of Emad Mokhnia, a Hezbollah commander? Hezbollah has said in the past that it will seek revenge. But if Hezbollah was going to carry out such an attack and then deny it, wouldn't it be better for them and beneficial to them to carry it out on any other day but this particular one? I mean, couldn't Israel use this to further sway public opinion that it must have been Iran or Hezbollah? How about the fact that this was carried out against a wife of an Israeli attache, not himself? I mean, look at it this way. If it was a guy, the world would have said simply, tit for tat, what goes around comes around, or Israel deserved it because they killed Iranian nuclear scientists. But now that it's a woman, the whole game changed. And Israel was very quick to use this in its own PR game, calling Iran the greatest exporter of terror, killing defenseless women and children which we've heard this all before. So based on all the facts that I said, I simply do not believe that Iran would risk its situation currently to carry out such a thing, and it's more likely to be a Israeli false flag operation because it would actually further their agenda by blaming Iran for everything and gain sympathy in the world public opinion. Now that's my video. Please like, comment, let me know what you think and subscribe. See you guys next time.